Ray, the question of personal identity seems obvious, but if I stop to think about it, I have all these different inputs of uh, sight, sound, feeling, touch, and I integrate them all together, and, and, and they're all bound together, and I'm a single person. And then if you look temporally, uh, how many molecules in my body are the same as when I was a child, or even as yesterday? They're completely different than they were even a few weeks ago. So. <laughs> So how do, we, how do we have a sense of personal identity with these massive differences in input and changes in time? Well, I think it's only coherent if you consider yourself to be an information structure. Uh, you are, I am, a pattern of information. That persists. I mean, I, I like to use the metaphor of the pattern that water makes in a stream as it goes around some rocks. It makes a certain pattern. That pattern can stay the same hour after hour, maybe year after year. The water is completely different in a matter of milliseconds. Mm -hmm. you, you talk about the river, but the river is completely different. What is river as well as the water? But the water is completely different every few milliseconds. So, but it does have some continuity. The pattern stays the same. Maybe the pattern changes slowly over the years. It looks a little different. Well, that's really a, a very good analogy to what we are. We're not a bunch of stuff. These, these particles change over very quickly. The actual cells die and are rebuilt, reconstructed uh, on a very regular basis. If you talk about the lining of the stomach, it's a few days. And, you know, name a particular cell, it has a half-life, and they're con we're constantly changing them. Even the neurons, although the neurons as cells persist, the components of them, uh, like the filaments and the tubules, it, they, they change over very quickly as well. And at a, certainly at a particle basis, it's completely different stuff. So I'm not the same stuff I was a matter of days ago, but I am very similar to the pattern that I was. Yes, there are changes, I've had experiences. So just like the pattern in the stream may change gradually, I'm changing gradually with my experiences, but there's a, there's a continuity, only of pattern of information, not, not of particles. So we are not physical stuff. If, if you really attach any importance to your own identity, that identity is a pattern of information. And that pattern of identification of our personal identity sits on neurons, I imagine, because if I lose my leg, I still feel like I'm my same person. Well, you can argue, you, that's an interesting question, what we consider to be part of ourselves. Uh, there are parts of our brain we don't consider part of ourselves because information darts into our awareness. It came from some other part of our brain, but we consider it as if it came from outer space and suddenly some idea <laughs> pops in our head or some fear. Uh, whereas we may really identify with certain parts of our physical body, other parts like the contents of our digestive system, maybe we don't consider part of ourselves. And so it's a complicated as to what we consider part of our identity. Yes, we do associate more closely our neuronal system, our, our uh, nervous system, uh, as being our own identity. And we already have people that have replaced portions of it with computers. And I've actually asked some of them, uh, do you consider that computer in your head, say a Parkinson's patient, to be part of you? Or is that just a computer that they happen to put in your head because it's a convenient place to put it so you won't <laughs> lose it? Uh, no, that's part of me. They had these neurons as part of the brain that enabled them to do certain physical things. Those neurons got destroyed, and then they had some severe physical disabilities that, that got replaced with this computer, and they restored their functionality. They're very protective of, yes, that's part of me, even though it's non-biological. Uh, there, the pattern is the same, not in terms, it certainly doesn't have neurons. It works on different principles, but it's actually processing information the same way that the neurons that are replaced processed information at the highest level of the methods or algorithms that those neurons were performing, even though the basic you know, way it implements it is completely different. But they consider that part of their identity. Well, it's the same thing with uh, replacing uh, of, of hearing and the auditory system and the visual system now, very crude and visual, but, but developing where these non-biological uh, sensory inputs are, 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 are analyzed as if they were part of our, our bodies normally. Yeah, and we're going to be adding more and more technology. I mean, I talk about where we will be able to have very intelligent devices the size of blood cells that will go inside our bloodstream, keep us healthy, and also go into our brains. That sounds very f futuristic. I'd point out there's already dozens of impressive animal experiments with putting blood cell-sized devices 
in the bloodstream of animals that are, that are performing sophisticated functions like scouting out cancer cells and destroying them. But ultimately, these devices will be you know, very intelligent, will have a lot of computation, communication, mechanical ability. They'll be able to go inside our brains through the capillaries non-invasively, interact with our biological neurons, and extend our, our brains, our memory, our rational faculties, provide virtual reality environments, incorporating all the senses, and, and so on. And we will consider that part of ourselves. We will become biological and non-biological. If we take seriously this concept that the pattern is the real me and uh, other things I may think is me, but this pattern of information is real and that that pattern can be not just simulated but actually be the equivalent uh, in a non-biological way, what, what does that say about the uh, identity of non-biological entities, of, of future computers? Uh, will they have a similar sense of, of personal identity? A, a pattern is a pattern. Well, yes. I mean, there's no reason. Certainly you can, will eventually be able to capture all the salient details that make up me and recreate that in another substrate. And that will have a personality just like mine. And we'll, ha we'll have a... Uh, an identity, it does get into some quandaries because we do have this concept of individual identity and yes we can create communities but I can't just smush my brain with others and create a super brain just like that. Computers can do that. You can take a million computers and just have them cooperate into a massively parallel device that is now a supercomputer. That's in fact how supercomputers are made these days by putting lots of smaller computers together. And so computers can separate into a million computers or they can merge into a supercomputer. And that's, so people say, well, therefore, they're not like humans. But it's actually a superset of humans because they, they're doing things that we can't do. They can do all the things we can do. I mean, they will be able to simulate individual minds. Uh, and I, I use the word simulation advisedly because they really will be able to recreate uh, all of the processes the informational processes, and that's basically what the brain is, is an information processor that take place in the, in, in the human brain. And so those will be the equivalent of, of human brains. And if we say we have an identity, then that will apply to these entities as well.